the Dragon Ball Legends 6th anniversary is officially over and now that it's gone just like your dad when you were born it's time to look back at things and reflect upon them so if you want your dad to come back make sure that you hit that thumbs up for me right now like this video and subscribe if you are new and I'll personally find your dad and tell him hey go home and you'll hear a knock on the door after you finish watching this entire video right up until the end but first Looking back at the DB Legends 6th anniversary, it's hard to consider it as anything other than successful. I mean, there has been a few low points there, here and there, like, you know, the maintenance and stuff like that. But I'm going to go through some of the low points today in the form of the characters. So I'm going to look back at every single summonable character of the Dragon Ball Legends 6th anniversary and rank them all from worst to best. So get ready to see your dad again after you watch this entire video. Number 9 is Sparking Blue Beerus. Now, I don't really have much to say about this character. I mean, he's just meh. Like, I did have him in my initial predictions as a Sparking character, but like... I didn't think that his impact on the game would be just so minimal, if not nothing. He's just like a nothing character. I mean, he's not really bad or anything like that. But like, it's more so that he's a very forgettable character. And you know, he has some decent stuff in his kit, like a disruption on the first time he gets hit and an AoE green card and stuff. But like, I don't really see him in PvP, if not at all. Like. You know, I think I've only fought him, like, when it was, like, beginning of the season or whatever. But, unfortunately, Sparking Blue Bearers has done little to impact the game of Dragon Ball Legends. But, number 8, we have Sparking Rage or Sparking Wrath Broly. Now, this guy was also an unfortunate release because, upon release... He was really good, I think. He did a lot of damage. He felt like how a Broly character should. He just like runs you down, runs through you like a juggernaut, and you know, you know, he just hits you hard and hits you fast, and you know, he can just he could just spam out a lot of cards with his cover now. And you know, his green card made him go type neutral, I think. And you know, his ultimate did AOE damage as well. So like it was a nice he was a nice one percent sparking character but then unfortunately you know as part two and three came along you started to see him less and less and less and you know the character that he did release with more on them later they were never really ran with him even though they were ran in the color format that you think would be best suited for, to run them both together with but unfortunately sparking probably did not do much to impact the meta of Dragon Ball Legends during the 6th anniversary. At 7 we have Aleph Super Saiyan God Goku. And you know it actually kind of pains me to have him this low. And I was gonna put him last just to make the God Goku fans you know upset and stuff. But I figured let me just actually do a proper list where I actually put some thought into it and not try and troll people and get them upset and stuff. But God Goku is just an unfortunate release. I think that he was massively overshadowed by the other LF character that he dropped next to. More on that annoying rubbish later, but you know, the fact that, you know, he had so many things working against him, including characters that, re that released alongside him. You know, his color being green was not an ideal choice, and them, you know, undertuning or not, if not holding back on his kit and he does have like useful stuff in his kit like aoe green endurance but then you know it just feels like there's something missing you know and i thought he was really good on release but then as time passed like the days passed within a few days i was like uh i don't think he's as good as i thought he was and you know animation wise he does look really good and I'm sure people have fun playing as him, but unfortunately, he's just not up to the standard of an LF anniversary release, you know. I just think that he doesn't make the cut. And you know, the, I want to be sorry for the God Goku fans and the God Goku copers, but some of them are like making like very ignorant and outlandish statements. Like, it's statements that a person who isn't like doesn't like play in like the upper echelon of the game 
that you know oh he's good he's this he's that he's top 10 now nah, i don't even think he's top 20 bro like don't don't kid yourselves like he's not i think he's still a good unit but he's far far from the top 10 far from great and you know i think that he was just done dirty you know with the releases the other releases going against him and also him being under tuned and him being green is a massive problem i think expect him to get a unique equipment in the near future but yeah that was god goku number seven at number six i have supreme kai aka shin aka i heard you want fujito yeah this guy was also a really good character i had trouble ranking number six and number five because they were to me they were close but more on that later but as for this guy supreme kai he is a really good character i think really really helpful for god key and margin buu saga as a support character and also he's like very annoying to fight against you know like especially with the way that he seals your cards and stuff and you know his ultimate does you know give you paralysis it is extremely infuriating when this guy catches you lacking or even when he doesn't catch you lacking and he just seals your cards you know it's just a very annoying character to fight against but also a welcome addition that i did predict in my initial predictions video so i'm happy that he is in the game just for that reason alone but yeah supreme kai shin is a really good character hopefully god ki will see more buffs unlike god goku not on the level of god goku i mean but you know more buffs on the level of this guy and you know the character of corrupt zamasu the zenkai that was a really good character as well and you know you see supreme kai fairly often in pvp i see him ran with zamasu i see him ran with fusing super vegeto i see him ran in the proud mode with a full margin buu saga team that team is like really good now and you know last year they tried to make margin buu saga a team but it didn't really pan out they even have the buu saga campaign but now the second time around the second attempt was the charm with the sixth anniversary and you know supreme kaishin is a core part of that team a very important part of that team and number five is another core part of the margin buu saga team it is evil buu pure evil buu margin buu the gray buu whatever you want to call him this is probably the best green unit that was released during this anniversary I find him extremely annoying to fight not so much now because we're very in a purple heavy meta but before that you know when he was released during part two of the anniversary i found a lot of trouble going up against him especially because i was someone who you know ran a lot of blue characters i didn't have that many powerful purple characters at the time and you know this guy was tough to deal with you know all his debuffing and his tanking you know like if you try to ultimate him or rising rush him or blue card him he will remove your buff so it'll make him very difficult to kill also he could switch into an endurance character and you know have them eat the hits without the worry of their buffs being cancelled without the worry of their endurance being cancelled it's very annoying to fight and you know keep in mind that he is also on the powerful opponent team i believe and also regeneration and margin buu saga i did mention as well regeneration is in a fairly great spot right now especially with the recent release of you know omega shenron and rage shenron who i kept off the list but you know i'll give them an honorable mention for them being a part of the after party but yeah evil buu pure evil buu is a really good addition a really strong addition to dragon ball legends one of this one percent sparkings that i've been waiting for for a very long time because it's the first time they've ever dropped him in sparking format you know they did have an, ex an extreme unit he was also very good as well but yeah evil boo really really good unit number four we have fusing lf gogeta blue now this guy here was someone that nobody saw coming i mean people did their predictions and stuff everyone is like fusing vegeto blue fusing super vegeto sorry and you know they were like god goku nobody saw this guy coming and you know he was a very welcome addition he added to the initial reveal the first ever reveals and stuff for the sixth anniversary he added so much to that because of the shock factor the surprise factor and you know this guy is not oppressive in any way shape or form 
he's not you know toxic or anything like that he's just straight up a really strong and a really good character very well designed but also kind of flawed character and i'll go into that in a bit but yeah this guy has a lot of healing capability you know when he fuses he blocks aoe green cards that's a nice addition as well you know he also he also has the the second vanish when he activates main and you know getting out the fusion is fairly simple you know especially when they start with the green card which destroys other people's green cards that's also helpful as well and you know the biggest selling point of this unit was the fact that they have the assault chain mechanic which is basically a way to bypass the auto dodge and the auto counter gauges like you know like super janemba ui goku Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta, Super Saiyan 2 Gohan, mechanics like that. And you know, the, it was a very polar, polarizing mechanic. It did work in a lot of ways, but also in some ways it did not work. Because I feel like they should have allowed him to be able to combo it into green and blue cards. But unfortunately it doesn't. So like if you're in the middle of an assault chain and you wanna, you know, end it off with the blue card, get the legendary finish or something like that, the person's just gonna dodge you straight up if they have their gauge. So that's unfortunate. But you know, as time passes, as we get more purple characters, this guy's value is only gonna go up. Because I feel like initially he was downplayed, if not slept on, if not rightfully rated. But now there's a lot of purples in the game that'll justify his placement being one of the strongest characters in the game right now. So that is Fusing Gogeta Blue number four. And at number three, we have Ultimate LF Gohan. The LF character that nobody really wanted, but we got anyway, because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how many fusion characters we get, it'll always be Gohan Ball Legends. Then, now, and forever. And you know, of course, because his name is Gohan, he's automatically very annoying to fight against and he's very strong and he's very... I would say he has a toxic mechanic where he like infinitely draws blue cards and that blue card just happens to nullify endurance, you know, it just happens to do that, you know, you know, like just take your endurance nullification and just have it. And you know, main ability removes your vanish, that's also very good. His cover change, which not many people focus on or people forget about his cover change does knock back against melee blue cards which is also very unnecessary for him to have i believe because why would they even give him that and you often forget about it i mean i, I find myself forgetting about it as well and you know it ends up costing me games but yeah you know it's gohan what do i have to say what else do I have to say? His name is Gohan, he's a really strong unit, he's an LF character. In the 6th anniversary of Dragon Ball Legends, of course, he's gonna be in the top 3. And at number 2, we have Fusing LF Super Vegito. The guy that everyone thought was coming, the guy that everyone wanted for the longest time. People really wanted Fusing characters for such a long time and they definitely delivered with this guy because I think that they really cooked, especially with the unfused aspect of them because a lot of people don't really focus on that but i think that it's really good i like the attention the attention to detail especially with goku having the one earring i think that was a nice touch as well and you know they get their their green card they switch you know they they can get bring out the fusion very fairly quickly you know and when they have a dead ally they have a guaranteed fuse and then of course when you go into Vegeta, it's go time, it's rising rush time because boy, this guy's rising rush is automatically gonna go through because I don't know why they gave him that, but that is gonna end up being one of the most annoying mechanics in Dragon Ball Legends history. I don't know why they gave him that in the first place. It's gonna be very toxic and harmful and harmful if they don't counter him immediately and it feels like they are trying to do that you know with ultimate gohan and with lf omega shinron because you know they can't die to vegeto's rushes you know them having endurance uncancelable endurance and indestructible respectfully respectively what am i saying 
But anyways, Vegito is a very strong character. It, even if you take away the guaranteed Rising Rush, I think he's a really good character. He's not a very oppressive character other than him having the guaranteed Rising Rush, which I think, again, is stupid, which I'm going to mention for the 5 billion time in this video. Yeah, it's a stupid thing. Very dumb, very dumb, very stupid, very dumb. But yeah, Fusing Super Vegito is very strong, guys. And, you know, there's a reason why he's the top 2 character. Because we got a lot of fusion warrior buffs as well. And the most prominent of the fusion buffs during the 6th anniversary in Dragon Ball Legends was of course Ultra Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta. Cast your minds back to the end of Legends Festival 2023. You know, we thought it was over. And then, you know, at the end, you know, Toshi just gave us a special message. He was like, hey, by the way, we're gonna Zenkai. LF Super Saiyan 4 Go Cheetah, and there's gonna be a new Dragon Ball GT festival starting. So, that Go Cheetah Zenkai was technically part of Legends Festival 2023, and it was the bridge into the Dragon Ball GT festival that we had the month afterwards. So, if you think about it, Super Saiyan 4 Go Cheetah Zenkai, LF Zenkai, was the start of the road. To Ultra Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta. It was a gradual build up. It was basically a tease telling us, hey, this is basically the anniversary Ultra. And you know, we did get him. So, yeah. GT got a lot of buffs this year. GT got a lot of love this year. You know, Toshi did say in that message that GT is going to get a ton of buffs this year. And boy, howdy, do I feel the pain in my wallet and my CC. Because as a GT main, it's difficult to keep up with all of these releases. All of these characters dropping, you know. I just want to save my CC, you know. Save a bunch of CC so that I can summon for the characters that I want. But nah, they're just giving me all the characters that I want. Got no time to save. And you know, it's becoming very harmful. And becoming very tough for me to keep up. But yeah. GT got a ton of help this year. We got LF Spirit Bomb Goku, Gogeta Zenkai that I mentioned already. LF Super 17, one of the most toxic characters in recent memory. LF Super Baby 2, one of the most underrated characters in recent memory. And then we got Ultra Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta, of course. Afterwards, we still got LF Omega Shinron. But speaking on Ultra Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta, he did have the auto dodge gauge, but slightly nerfed. You know, it just has to fill up by him getting hit. It's not like automatic where you just get it for free. His ultimate is just the single most powerful ultimate in Dragon Ball Legends history. If you survive this, call it a miracle. That's all I'm gonna say. Because it has rising rush potential level of damage. And you know, we got cover change, universal cover change. His blue card restores vanish. He feels like a mix of the Tag Force character with Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta, the LF one. He feels like a mix of the Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta LF and the Tag Super Saiyan 4's LF. With the bit of, you know, UI Goku and Gohan sprinkled in with the gauge and stuff, you know. Just an insanely powerful character. But I don't think he's as toxic as, you know, Gohan and UI Goku. But he's still really, really strong and very tough to go up against, you know. But yeah, Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta, the king of Legends Anniversary. Once again, three years later, four years later, whatever it is. Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta is the king of Dragon Ball games, the undisputed face of Dragon Ball games. But yeah, that is my list ranking every Dragon Ball Legends 6th anniversary character from worst to best. And your dad should be showing up and pulling up right now. So if you see a knock, if you hear a knock on the door, tell him Blaze said hi and I'll see you in the next video. Click another video on screen. Peace out.